Greetings and welcome to Bubble Earthing. I'm Bubble and you're fantastic and today we're going to be going over all of the red cards from the new already out on arena kind of come out soon in paper magic set Dungeons and Dragons Adventures in the Forgotten Realms. It looks like it's a lot of fun D&D &D themed just so we are clear again I mentioned this in all of them. I'm going to have an intro video that kind of goes over the specific mechanics and uniqueness of this set. Um, so I'll address you know certain things there. So when we reach something like adventure or pack tactics or roll d20 If we have them in the red cards I'm just gonna kind of go over it in general not go so much in detail if you like detail check out that video until then Or I guess you know without further ado Armory veteran is a two mana two two as long as an army veteran is equipped it has menace There is a decent amount of equipment in this set So it's not unthinkable that you're probably gonna have a couple of them in your draft deck or in, in your sealed uh, in standard, this thing's horrible. You just want something that already, like, you don't need it to have conditional menace. You can just have it have menace. In limited, this thing is decent, but not fantastic. I don't know, two out of five. Yeah, it's I basically just consider this a bear. And we're moving on. Barbarian class. That's one of the unique things. So for one red, if you would roll one or more dice, instead roll that many dice plus one and ignore the lowest roll. So it's nice. It gives you advantage if you're familiar with the um, D and D. So obviously, you need a lot of synergy. A lot of effects that roll dice to get any value off that but it's only one mana this is actually one of the cheaper classes might be the cheapest to you know play and level up all right so for level two whenever you roll one or more dice target creature you control gets plus two plus zero and gains menace mm, so that means you have to make all your dice rolling effects on your oh it doesn't actually have to be on your turn it just can mean that your opponent's attacks are awkward but have to mostly do them on your turn before you attack if you want to get that aggressive uh, bonus which is kind of what barbarians, barbarians want to do mm. Interesting. You can trigger multiple times in your turn, but so far dice rolling is a little bit of an expensive thing to enable, so I'm not too keen on that. Three mana creatures you control have haste. This is good. This actually can enable some bigger plays, because maybe you have a certain creature with a tap ability that you don't want to wait a turn to activate. You just want to say, I play this, cool, I can tap it, and do whatever. So this is not a bad card at all. Of course, you do have to be rolling dice. If you have no roll of d20 things, and there's quite a few in blue, then... There's a few in black. Um, if you don't have any of those, then I honestly just wouldn't even bother. Because you're just banking on paying six mana to have everything um, you control at haste. It's a good effect, but it's not that good, I don't think. You would rather just, I think I would rather just put in some more creatures. In standard, uh, one out of five, maybe it sees some play just because it's not too bad and it's fairly cheap. In limited, I would give it a eh, one out of five there as well. Honestly, I really don't think it's very good. I think this might be a little bit of a, bit of a trap. Battlecry Goblin, a 2 mana 2-2 two, two Goblin. You can pay 2 Goblins you control, get plus 1 plus 0, and gain haste until end of turn. This is better. This is how you do haste. This, you get there eventually. Is it really hasty if you gotta put 6 mana into it? Mm. This is nice. And it has a little pack tactics word where whenever Battlecry Goblin attacks, if you can, if you attack a creature with a total power of 6 or greater this combat, Effect. Create a 1-1 one, one red goblin creature token that's tapped and attacking. So this is essentially the... jeez. Uh, what was that again? Uh, not like Goblin War Chief, but it was. There was a card previously that did this sort of thing. Uh, Legion. Legionnaire? Legion War Boss? I don't know. Just, ah. Anyway, um, it's a very nice effect to have, although. The. Uh, pardon me there. The other card that I'm trying to remember here that I just can't for the life of me. Activated it on its own, whereas this you need to attack and have like a decent number of creatures behind it. But honestly, just for goblins, super solid card. In standard, I don't think there's enough goblins to actually push it um, to being like super top tier. But that being said, I'm going to give this like a 2.5 out of 5. It's a very strong effect for what it is, um, and it's a fantastic enabler. So I think this is a quite nice. You would not be upset. I think this goes in nearly any goblin deck if there is one. And as far as limited goes, if you have enough goblins, sure. I mean, if not, it can at least buff itself, even though, you know, it's kind of expensive to buff itself there. It's, you know, one off fire breathing, but it buffs itself. You can attack. You can trigger yourself if you get strong enough, if you have no mana. Uh, yeah, three to five in limited. Boots to speed. You pay a red for an equipment. A equipped creature gets plus one, plus zero, and has haste, and it's only one to equip. So this is not, you know, the lightning graves or swift foot boots or strider harness exactly, but it's still pretty damn good. Um, actually, it might be close to strider harness. Hmm. Because the other one's equipped for like zero, so that's why. But this is equipped one. So once you play it, all you have to do is add one to whatever creature you play and basically just throw it on there. That's not bad at all. In limited, this card is actually pretty solid because you can oftentimes just pay another mana, throw it on there, buff it, and give it um, let it attack right away for the turn. 
In standard, no, I feel like this card's kind of useless. You wanna, if you wanna attack with creatures, and like the turn that you play them, you play creatures with haste. You don't play creatures that don't have haste and then play boots of speed. You just have haste. So, standard, zero out of five, completely useless. Uh, limited. This is like a two point five out of five. It's actually kind of legit. I would probably only take one. I don't think I would ever go for more than one of these. But the one that you get is pretty nice. Brazen Dwarf. Two mana, one three. Whenever you roll one or more dice, Brazen Dwarf deals one damage to each opponent. So it's a nice little inevitability, and it has a. Um, it's statted more defensively, I should say. So that's pretty good. It's very similar to Electrostatic Field almost. It's not the same at all, not nearly the same power level. But, you know, it gives me those kind of vibes. So I kind of like this card. In standard, I don't think this is actually going to like do what you want it to do. It's not going to be super amazing. I'd rather just play Dranith Stinger and get that little chip damage in there, or just you know do some other things. That I mean, hell, you could just play the Sanctum of the no, Sanctum of the Stone Fang. Yes, play the Black Enchantment, which is definitely what you want to do when you're replacing a red creature. My bad. Um, <laughs> still, though, there are better cards that can slowly tax your opponent like this. That's like this is really isn't a great payoff. That being said, in limited, decent, you, of course you have to have enough um, dice rolling, otherwise a 1-3 body isn't going to do a whole lot other than clog up the board for a turn, maybe. Uh, full disclosure, I've played a little bit of the limited format on Arena. It is fast and super obnoxious, and I love it, but this is way too slow. This is not something that's going to actually get very far. Burning Hands is a 2-minute instant. Burning Hands deals 2 damage to target creature or planeswalker. If that permanent is green, Burning Hands deals 6 damage instead. There's one of these cards for every color where it specifically hates on another color. The white one hates black, the black hates white, the green hates blue. I imagine the blue hates green, and the red's just here like, I don't know, I'll hate on this, I guess. <laughs> I will also hate on green, and green's like, why me? Hmm. I forget what the blue one does, actually. Uh, hmm. Couldn't tell you. Something, something, maybe counter a spell, maybe bounce something. Doesn't matter. Anyway. <laughs> it's funny because I reviewed them already, but who cares? So, with that... Uh, obviously, this sideboard card in standard and limited. This is okay. Two mana deal two is not a good rate at all, and the fact that it can't go face is also significant because you know it's it's shock, but it costs one more, and it's worse. Um, you can't target quite as many things, but it's removal if you have it, and the chances your opponent's playing green, sure. Just keep in mind if you have this thing in the sideboard and your limited thing to bring it in if you see any green creatures. If you don't, oh well. But it will usually kill pretty much anything that comes down, except for maybe, I don't know, giant green... Uh, I was going to say Titanithrax. No, not Titanithrax, although I don't think you can kill that either. Um, Titanius? No, that's something else. <laughs> you know what I mean. We'll get there. <laughs> I haven't actually reviewed the green cards yet. I've seen them, but I just forget the one. Uh, Tarask? I think it's called Tarask. Okay, yeah. A big green dino. You know what I mean. Four mana, four three. For Chaos Channeler with... Uh, let's see, whenever it attacks, you roll a d20. 1 through 9. Exile the top card of your library, you may play it this turn. Cool. 10 through 19. Exile the top two cards of your library, you may play them this turn. And for that nat 20, you, you exile an extra card. Um, Exile the three top cards of your library, you may play them this turn. Which is very, very strong effect, actually. I feel like this card is fairly good. In fact, in limited... The fact that it's a more aggressive thing, it has four power, so you can oftentimes attack and your opponent might not have the best blocks. You can usually put them in a, you know, kind of a weird space to figure out how to get around it. And if you manage to untap with it, which, you know, unless you give it haste, you attack right away, then you can just declare your attacks first and see what you get off the top of your library. And it does say play, so if you get lands, you can play those. Yeah, nice card in limited, absolutely. Standard is too slow, but in limited, like, it's pretty good. It is pretty good. Critical hit. Or two mana, you get an instant speed, target creature gains double strike until end of turn. When you roll a nat 20, return crystal, crystal, return critical hit from your graveyard to your hand. So, and a natural 20 is a roll that displays 20 on the die, yes. So you have to have not only cards that, you know, have the whole roll of d20 effect in them, you also have to be an aggressive deck, which in red is, okay, you know, fairly common, but also there is big red where you just play a whole lot of removal. There's like sort of red control. Hell, there's even a sort of like a red combo deck or a red ramp where you play iron crack feet and then try to get out some like huge spell. So this isn't necessarily going in that kind of deck. But let's see, the potential, sure it only happens 5% of the time you roll a 20, right? But when you do, is this good enough to potentially like, you know, get it back and say, yes, I got that value. 
even if you're self milling, I feel like it's not. In limited, I feel like it's definitely not. So it's a nice thing. I like the idea that the flavor is on point. It's very, very tasty. Just, mwah. but the playability isn't there. Ah, Delina Wild Mage. For four mana, you get a three two, and whenever she attacks, or whenever Delina Wild Mage attacks, I don't, I don't want to assume. Um, choose a target creature you control and roll d twenty. So you pick your creature. Um, this creature is attacking as well. Let's see. Uh, create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary. And at the end of combat, it goes away. Now that's a one three fourteen, which means that you have you do that uh, seventy five percent of the time, right? Fairly often, fairly fairly often, and that's gonna happen three quarters of the time. You're making a token that's a copy of something. I like that it gets around the legend rule in case you need to make a copy of say, let's see, choose target creature. You can target her. Um, whatever. You can target Delina if you don't have any of the creatures, and at least she copies herself for the turn there, so that's nice. Um, you can also just. You know, there's no restriction on where you can target for your own things. You don't have to worry about that. That being said there, the second ability is one that can potentially go infinite. Create one of those tokens and then roll again. So yes, if you keep rolling 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, or even 20, enough times, you can just win the game. Similar to a sort of a mirror march effect. It, you know, the eyes of it happening, very, very slim, but it can happen, and it'll be funny when it does, and there'll be clips of it on YouTube, and that's fun. In Limited, this card seems pretty damn good. You have to be able to attack with this, and a 4-mana 3-2 is not great. But you can, say you play this and it resolves, um, and you manage to untap with it, right? So turn 5, because you say you're on curve. You can play something like, I don't know, an owl bear or just another big creature. You can, you can play... Um, Ismrith, uh, you can play a big creature, sorry, uh, Emrith, yes, you can do that, and you can target it with the Lena Wild Mage, and it gives it like a pseudo haste, because the you don't have to target a creature that's already attacking, you just attack and say this one, so that's a nice little, little trick there to almost give it haste and sneak something in there. So I like that quite a bit, and limited, yeah, I'm going to say this is probably 3.5 out of 5 in limited. It's it's quite good. It just unfortunately might not be able to attack more than once, but that one attack had better get you there. Um and or otherwise you're doing it wrong. And in standard, mm, mm, these kind of effects don't really see much play. But it's a whole lot of fun. I'm gonna give it a two out of five in standard. I think it could be there. It's still unfortunately slow for red because you, you, red's kind of, you know, Anax or <laughs> Anax and then um, Ember Cleave and you win the game. So this is actually a turn behind on that one. But at least it's a pretty solid creature. I kind of like it. I think the effect's really cool. All right. So yeah, 2.5 out of 5 in standard and like 3.5 in limited. Dragon's Fire is a 2 minute instant. As an additional cost to cast the spell, you may reveal a dragon card from your hand or choose a dragon control. So a little... If you do, you get a little bonus effect there. So it deals 3 damage to target creature or planeswalker, or if you revealed something or control a dragon, it deals damage equal to the power of that creature, uh, or that card or creature instead. So if you play this thing and you happen to have a gold span dragon in your hand, instead of dealing 3 damage, you deal 4 damage. If you have a Velomox Lorehold, instead of dealing that much, it's like 5, I believe a Lorehold is. Pretty sure it's a 5-5. Five, five. Um, and so on. You know, There are bigger dragons now, and because um, we have quite a few now that just come out in the set, hence Dungeons and Dragons. So uh, it's a nice little card. I don't think it's going to see too much play. I mean, worst case, it's a two mana deal three. So unlimited, this is pretty decent removal. Nothing wrong with that at all. It's a lightning strike, not a not a lightning bolt. Don't get this confused. You will be sad. Um, worth noting, it can't go face. But yeah, limited, like absolutely like three out of five like for removal that's that's solid there's nothing wrong with this maybe even higher it's standard i think there's just better removal out there we still have blitz of the thunder raptor which sees no play and oftentimes deals more damage there's also was it dragon's descent dragon descent i'm think i'm probably thinking of the wrong yeah i'm thinking of the wrong card there but there's the one where it deals damage to everything except dragons and if it dies and if they die then they get exiled like super it's like cleansing fire maybe no that's a um <laughs> Cleansing Fire, I believe, is a land destruction spell. So, I don't exactly recall what it is, but it's out there, and this, I don't feel is better than that if that's what you're looking for. So, there are better options. 1 out of 5 in standard, but like, solid, limited, just good removal. Dueling Rapier is a 1 mana equipment with flash. When it enters the battlefield, attach it to target creature you control, and it gets plus 2, plus 0, which is pretty nice. I mean, hell, just throw it in there for, uh, for 1, and 
It's a very sneaky little combat trick that sticks around. Unfortunately, the equip for four is pretty nasty, but it comes in already equipped, which is the only redeeming factor here. So in standard's too slow, it's terrible. Oh, actually, hold on. Standard. I'm imagining you throw this in your creature. It gets buffed. You would rather just play Infuriate or something. There's a you know narrow opportunity where you might actually have four mana to pay for it. Unless you're doing some weird red artifact synergy, which I don't think should be a thing. So no, yeah, standard is not... Not enough value there. In limited, however, it's pretty legit. There's nothing wrong with this at all. It's almost like flashing in an enchantment, because odds are you're not really going to equip it for four, but you can. So, yeah, I would say 2.5 out of 5, maybe even 3 in limited. Cool. Earth Cult Elemental. For 6 mana, you get a 6-6 six, six elemental. Hmm, who saw that coming? When it enters the battlefield, roll a d20. 1 through 9, each player sacrifices a permanent. Uh, 10 through... 19 each opponent sacrifices a permanent and 20 each opponent sacrifices two permanents which is pretty damn good imagine you play six mana i play this big guy you sack two things worth noting that it doesn't say non-land permanence so they can sacrifice land so it might not be as impactful on the board as you like but you just resolved a big thing and potentially are you know at least their opponent's going to lose one thing it's not bad in fact it's actually quite nice there and of course, be aware that if you roll low, then you also have to sacrifice something, so be prepared. In that case, hopefully it doesn't happen. I wish you all roll well, but in the cases where you don't roll so well, um, make sure you tap whatever land you need and probably target one of those if you need, or, or have something that activates when it dies, you know? So with that, uh, yeah, this is actually like a 3 out of 5 in limited, because it's a decent body with a decent effect, and it's like a late game thing. Standard is useless, but you know, outside of that, it's okay. Of uh, Faridas, Faridays, Faridas, sure. Frida's Fireball. <laughs> for five mana, instant speed deals five damage to target a creature or planeswalker, and you roll a d20. If you roll one through nine, it deals two damage to each player, and if you roll a ten through twenty, it deals two damage to each opponent. So it's five mana, definitely, no, no, not really definitely, but like you target a creature or planeswalker, maybe some of that damage splashes to your opponent's face. Ugh. Like, it's okay in limited, because at least it's removal, like 2 out of 5 wise that way, but ugh, in standard, this is just so bad and so slow. No, it's terrible. Flame Skull! Oh boy, thank you, because that last card was making me uh, have some doubts. It's a 3 mana 3 1 flying, it cannot block. With Rejuvenation. When it dies, exile it. If you do, exile the top card of your library until the end of your turn. You may play one of those cards. One of those cards being. Flame Skull itself, then Exile itself, or the top card of your library, they just exiled. There's, there's two options there. Um, and you know what? That is fantastic. Let's see, until the end of your next turn. And it says, <laughs> the timing there is quite nice, so that if it dies during your opponent's turn, from, say, Sorcery Speed Removal, maybe. Obviously not blocking, but, you know, maybe they hit it with a good old uh, Doom Scar or something. Or they decided, I don't know, they just top deck something and they want to go for the throat. Yes, why not? We're going to go that way. Then, our Heartless Act is what I was trying to say. Okay. Then you have until your next turn to actually play the card. If you reveal an instant, of course you can choose to play that instead, but if you reveal a sorcery in this, and you don't even have to choose right away, um, you just have the option of the two whenever the um, ability to play them comes around. So, amazing card that can be played over and over and over again it's not legendary and it still just costs three and it flies because why not give it flying um so this is going to be quite easily like a five out of five i believe both ways i think this card is insane is it better than a, a phoenix of ash yes i think so good enough okay yeah if you can't see the value in this thing then let me know because then maybe i missed something <laughs> I'm going to be humble there and say, well, then I, yeah, I could be wrong. But I like the way it's looking at it. All right, Goblin Javelin Ears, a one minute one with haste. All right, so a little bit of Raging Goblin Power Creep, cool. Whenever it becomes blocked, it deals one damage to target a creature blocking it. Nice, so if it gets blocked, it has to... If it gets blocked by an X1, it kills it before damage is assigned, um, before combat damage. And if it is blocked by an X2, something with uh, two toughness, then it will kill it afterwards, you know, in combat. It's nice, it's, it's kind of cool. It doesn't always matter too much. You can, of course, play this and then flash in the Manticore. Or is it Masticore? I think it's Manticore. And that'll finish it off. Um, hmm. But it's not super impactful. So, just, okay card. 
in standard it's not very likely to see play at all there are plenty of cheap things that have haste that you know have other effects i don't think this is actually worth much although i don't know maybe i'll say like a one out of five in standard it could see play not a zero in fact we'll even go up to a two you know why because it's a goblin and there's going to be some goblin support there's already some goblin support so maybe one minute one one with haste isn't unplayable at all with haste and a bonus thing is fine in limited i would say uh, two out of five there you know you get it out do a few points of damage maybe that matters maybe you can equip it and buff it up somehow nothing wrong with this card at all very nice design goblin morning star is a two minute equipment that looks painful okay so hoarding order uh the equipped creature gets plus one plus zero and has trample you can equip for two and when it enters the battlefield you roll a d20 if you roll a one through nine you make a one one red goblin creature token if you get a 10 through 20 you make a token and then attach this thing to it so it could be two mana basically summon a one one throw this on there and you get a two one goblin with trample that's kind of legit i mean honestly either way you get your creature token just whether or not you have to pay the equip cost afterwards is is reliant upon the dice so be wary of that but yeah in limited this card is actually pretty nice i would say developing even though equipment's not great developing the equipment and having a body attached to it or just having a body along with it or maybe money may not equip is super good so like three yeah trample's really nice too because yeah, there's like quite a few large creatures you can get. Yeah, three to five there. In standard, zero. But I like where you're going. Hoarding Ogre, for real this time. Oh, that oh that smile. That damn smile. All right, four mana, three, three. Uh, one in attacks, roll a d20. You can... I was going to say, you can tap to make a treasure. No, no, that's... The, the dice will decide what you do. So, if you roll low, you make a treasure. If you roll high, you make two treasures. And if you roll that nat 20, you make three treasures for the price of four mana, I guess. That's pretty legit. Honestly, in limited, this card's very nice because there's oftentimes um, moments when you get mana screwed where you suddenly realize that, oh no, all my card This needs double green, and this needs double blue, and I only have black mana on the board. What do I do? So, that... Oh, that rhymes well wow, okay has this ever happened to you you attack with the hoarding ogre and you at least get one treasure no matter what so that's at least some reliability there a little guarantee of some value with that this is actually quite good i'm gonna say hmm, limited 3.5 yeah 3.5 awesome there standard is too slow i don't want to have to do this clay gold fan dragon feel better about yourself but yeah limited solid card hobgoblin bandit lord for three mana, you get a two, three goblin. And a rogue, in case you want to throw this in rogues somehow. Other goblins you control get plus one, plus zero, plus one, plus one. Very, um, very important. Very, very uh, significant effect. Worth noting is other goblins, but if you have two of them, then they buff each other. Not legendary. And for a red and tapping this thing, this deals damage equal to the number of goblins that entered the battlefield under your control this turn to any target. Which is going to bring up some weird situations when... <laughs> You play the goblin, play, like, in paper. You play goblin javelin here. Goblin count one. Like, what? It's a like goblin storm, basically. I don't know what you would want to call that, but, you know, just... The goblin count is one. Oh, okay. All right. Next turn, okay. Um, Goblin count one, sure. Goblin count two, okay. You only have two mana right now. Pass the turn. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, raise the alarm, goblin count two. I'm sorry, it's just, it's, it's funny. Um, I guess Warrens, right? <laughs> That'd be a sort of thing. But anyway. So, let's see. Where are we now? Yes, I like this card quite a bit. It reminds me a bit of a munition, Munitions Expert, which is much better than this, of course. But it's a nice card, and I think it was Modern Horizons, the first one. Just reminiscent of it. But the fact that it already has the like Aura Lord buff effect um, is amazing for goblins already. I don't know if it's going to see too much play in older formats, probably, but yeah. Goblin decks, eat your heart out, this thing's fantastic. Obviously, it can't be run outside of goblins, but you know what? Maybe goblins are going to be the way to go. So, in limited, um, okay card, not really great if you don't have any other cards for it, and a little slow. I'm going to say 2.5 out of 5 in limited, but in standard, I'm going to leave it at 2.5, maybe even 3. You know, if you have a goblin deck, you probably run 4 of these. Just saying. Bob Goblin Captain. Two mana, three one, and let's see, pack tactics effect. This gains first strike until end of turn. It's okay. It's not not amazing, you know, because how long is it gonna take you to get 
all the pack tactics like you know power on the board unless you just buff this thing and if you do you might already have first strike due to an equipment that you put on it or something is, is possible so not really a huge fan of this but two out of five and limited uh, zero out of five in standard hulking bugbear also a goblin why is it called a bugbear though like bug and bear i understand bear just big scary kind of you know more of a mini boss even virtually boss goblin but bug where's the bug anywho so um three mana three three haste cool I could potentially see a goblin deck running this in standard just because, I don't know, maybe you you really need those goblins, otherwise you're never going to make it. So I think they actually just run shapeshifters over that, though. <laughs> over this. Um, 1.5 out of 5 in standard. It could. It shouldn't, but it might see play. Someone's probably going to force it. And in limited, this is actually not bad at all. So 2 out of 5, 2.5 out of 5 if you have other goblin synergy. Otherwise, it's just a 2 out of 5. It's okay. Improvised Weaponry is a 3-mana sorcery. Okay, they're swinging like some kind of idol at it. All right, gotcha. Um, deal 2 damage to any target. Create a treasure token. So, worth noting, sorcery speed. So, if it was just, you know, sorcery speed, deal 2 damage to anything, that would be absolutely terrible. The only redeeming thing about it is that you can go face. But then you add the treasure. Treasure is nice, but it's not fantastic. 1.5 out of 5 in limited because it's really not fantastic. It's not great, but it can help you for mana screwed, and at least it, like I said, it can go to the face, but it costs a lot, and uh, it's a big investment. You may actually just have to use the other treasure the same turn if you want to play two things in one turn. Not good. Uh, and standard, useless. Terrible card. Leave it alone. Inferno of the Star Mounts is a big old dragon. Six mana, six, six. Cannot be countered. Keep that in mind. You can still play your counter spells, but it just it immediately counters the counter spells. <laughs> but who watches the Watchmen? Flying with haste. <laughs> with flying in haste, I guess. And you can pay a red Inferno of the Star Mounts. It gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. Also known as fire breathing. Pretty cool. All right, standard sort of dragon effect. However, when its power becomes 20 this way, just 20, it deals 20 damage to any target. And if you don't choose your opponent's face, you have my respect. But it's worth, like, first off, that's a whole lot of mana, that good luck. I mean, you can play Iron Crag Feet and not use the mana on instant sorcery. You can just or spell even, you can use the mana to buff this thing. But let's see now, and you play this, I'm thinking standard, like, and limited, obviously this card is a 5 out of 5, like 10 out of 5, 20 out of 5, it's fantastic. Even though you're probably not going to be running mono red, and then you probably won't be able to buff it that much, it's still a 6 mana, 6, 6 flying haste, that can't be countered, like, huge body, amazing thing. In standard, let's see now. So unlimited, fantastic, amazing, top of the top, top of the, the top, the best of the best, yeah, the cream of the crop, the cream that rises to the top. All right, and then in limited, I gotta get my format straight because I keep throwing words around. Constructed, standard, worth noting either way, that its power has to become exactly twenty using the effect. You can use other buffs and get it up to like you know an eighteen or a nineteen, but when it hits twenty, it has to be by this effect and only twenty. If you, you know, you do that, you hit 20, cool, you do 20 to something, maybe your opponent healed a little bit, so they're at like 1 or 2 now. If you put more mana into it, it will not, um, it will not trigger again if it goes, okay, I buff it to 21. No, you're buffed to 21 and you have a flying haste thing, you can probably just win anyway, but it will not trigger again there. You would need, if you want to do it again the same turn, you need some way to debuff your creature and then buff it again, which is kind of weird, but... And probably not worth it, but it's just the strange circumstance there. So keep that in mind. But fantastic card there. I think a standard could see some play, just because. Would it be in a mono red deck? Probably. Almost certainly, yes. Would it be in one that has like a bunch of treasure and maybe iron crack feet? Oh, hell yeah. Oh, I'm actually getting excited now. Oh my. Okay. Yeah, uh, standard. I'm going to say four out of five. I think that can actually be super. Uh, let me just put you back on there. Ah, oh, look at you. Oh, just. You're. You're scaring me in a good way. All right, Jaded Cell Sword. I'm gonna I'm definitely gonna get killed by one of those one time, and I'll be like, "Yep, I knew it. <laughs> I saw it coming, and yet I could not stop it." Okay, Jaded Cell Sword is a four mana four three. On an, on ETB, if you use mana from a treasure to cast it, it gains first strike and haste on a turn, which is really nice. In fact, if you use mana from a treasure to cast it, say you. Say you're running red and green because it's the only thing I can exactly recall, and you play like you find the cursed idol thing to make a treasure. 
which is a two mana spell. So then when you come around to turn three, you will have, you know, assuming you make your land drop, you'll have four mana. This thing coming out on turn three with first strike and haste is an insane value play. It's a fantastic tempo. So with that, if you have enough treasure things, and just like some fantastic combination of uh, things, you know, I attack faster and, you know, and um, more potently, I guess. I don't know. Yes, the potency of this card. In standard, this could, I'm going to say two out of five in standard. Maybe if we have some quick treasure, like, you know, enablers, treasure creators, I don't know, something along those lines, then this could actually see play in an aggressive deck. And that'd be kind of fun. But if not, then absolutely not. And in limited, yeah, I'm going to give this a good old 3, 3.5 in the right circumstances. Worst case, you play a 4 mana 4 3. It feels pretty bad. That brings it down to like a 2, but overall, uh, 3.5. Because the turn when you actually get it to. The game when you get to play it on turn 3 that way is going to be a good game. Kick in the door. For a red, you get a sorcery. Put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. That creature gains haste until end of turn and can't be blocked by walls. That last part is largely, largely irrelevant, but that's flavorful, I guess. Venture into the dungeon. So, one mana, you buff something a little bit. And at least the buff stays around and it gains haste, so you can oftentimes just have it linger around there. Venturing is actually quite a nice mechanic. And there are the dungeons for you, in case you're wondering. So, it's actually not bad. It's decent value quite often. Um, the Scry 1, uh, from what I've seen, is... I, I oftentimes, when I play the few games that I have, went into the Lost Mine of Fandelver just because I want to see if I can get a land or if I want to throw away a land or what the top card is. It's pretty nice information. And then after that, you can get a treasure token, so you just get more mana back and stuff. It's very, very um, good utility. Much more than I thought it would be. So, with that in mind, uh, this card, while it doesn't draw you a card, it takes up a space, it's very slow, it's gonna be like a... Mm, you don't even have to attack with a creature, and you just venture automatically there. It's gonna be a 1.5 out of 5. Giving something a post on counter is not exactly, you know, game-breaking, board-breaking, it's not necessarily gonna push you through to victory. But it could. It could be nice uh, to do, and it could just help you with the venture. In standard, if there's like a venture turbo thing, then I could see this actually happening because it only costs one mana. Never underestimate one mana cards. So for that reason, 1.5 out of 5 standard. And the same thing, yeah, same thing limited. Interesting. Magic Missile is a 3 mana sorcery that can't be countered, and it deals 3 damage divided as you choose among 1, 2, or 3 targets, but not 4 targets, that'd be weird. So, okay, it's, I mean, it's, it's alright. It's a red spell that wants to help control the board. That's kind of strange. I mean, I guess you could play this in mono red if you're fighting white. Don't you want to just like do stronger things? In limited, it's okay. Two out of five, you can maybe kill a couple things, but oftentimes they're only going to kill one. And let's see, at least you can go like you can hit your opponent's face. If they only have like one creature, you can say okay, three to the creature to kill it, and two to you. Oh, no, not, not, that's not how that works. I'm thinking you do like three of the two and one. No, um, you can, yeah, you can deal two to the creature and then one damage to your opponent's face. Like, it's, yeah. In standard, I'm going to put this as a whopping zero. Meteor Swarm. This is probably better than zero, though. X and three. And X and uh, three red in particular. X and err. Meteor Swarm deals eight damage. Set amount. Divide it as you choose. As you choose, yes. As you choose among X target creatures and or planeswalkers. So, for, you have to put at least four mana into it. For four mana, you deal eight damage to one creature or planeswalker. Probably dies. Well done. Keeping in mind sorcery speed. For five mana, you can pick two different things and balance it however you want. So you can do four and four, five and three, six and two. Eight and zero. I'm not going to mention the last one because then, because put that in the comments down below. Yeah, got him. So uh, let's see. In limited, this card's actually quite nice. It's really if you have like, let's say you have six mana. So X equals three. You basically kill three things your opponent has. I'm going to deal three to you and three to you and two to you and yeah, good. I win. If they only have two creatures, you only have to have X equal two. The damage is set, so just keep that in mind. In standard, this card is largely too slow. I mean, four mana kill a thing is too slow. Yeah, so for that reason, uh, zero. 
One out of five. I'm gonna no, zero. Zero. I said it, and we're sticking to it. Zero there. But in in limited, it's like a three point five, possibly even four. It's very nice removal. Minion of the mighty. Hey, there he is. Okay, sorry, he was giving me a weird look. So, it's a one mana zero one kobold, which I love, with menace. And I'll just cut to the chase right now. This is the enabler for a two for a turn to kill in standard and i want that to happen i'm going to give it a shot it's already been accomplished but i want to join the ranks of those who have done it and i can say yeah i did that i feel like it's a rite of passage to kind of go through this um course of events so let's see there if you want to watch that check out my streams hey i'm gonna try that eventually okay so let's see there da -da -da -da. pack tactics you can put a dragon creature from your hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking worth noting of course it's a zero one, so you need some other things to enable it, either buffs or equipments or you know but well, I mean equipments are buffs, I guess, or other creatures most notably. Not only that, but you also need, you know, a dragon in your hand at some point. In limited, that is not very difficult because there's quite a few dragons. So there's a good chance that you'll get one. Maybe not necessarily in your colors. I don't know if this is the card you like immediately take. I don't think this is anywhere close to like a first pick, but it's a nice little guy. Honestly, if I got this in a draft, I wouldn't necessarily be too happy about it unless I'm taking it just for my collection. In standard, however, however, so obviously in the turn two um, win deck, which is almost certainly not <laughs> very competitive, um, it's a must have, but I'll put it at like a three out of five there. Outside of that sort of thing, it's not a, it's a kobold, it's not like a goblin or something, so there's really no support for it. Hmm, yes, you'd be playing dragons, but I can imagine a neck that just happens to run dragons as well. But would you want a 0 1? I don't think you would want a 0 1 creature. I think you'd just rather be able to play your dragons later on. It's sneaky though. Maybe like one of these? I could see this being like a 1 or 2 of. I would never run all 4. And so. I'm gonna give this a 2 out of 5 in like some other red deck that is not just trying to cheese at a very quick win. Or a very like a turn two victory, and a five out of five in the deck where it does. Hey, there you go, decisive. Orb of Dragon Kind is a two mana artifact. You can pay one and tap it, add two mana and any combination of colors. Spend this mana only to cast dragon spells or activate abilities of dragons. So it's dragon mana ramp. Pretty cool. Also mana fixing because you pay for two. You pay one and adds two mana. Cool. So it nets you one mana for dragons. Or you can pay a red and tap this and sacrifice it. Look at the top seven cards of your library. You know there's that artifact thing, um, Artificer or the, the Smith, the Ingenious Smith, that's what it was, where you look at like the top four and try to find the artifact. Yeah, four cards isn't very many. Seven cards is an entire hand, right? It's a lot. So, odds are you'll get, you're gonna get a hit with this. You can reveal a dragon card from among them, put it into your hand, the rest in the bottom. This card is fantastic. The dragons are pretty good. I don't see why this card shouldn't find its way in a deck. In limited, if you have a couple dragons, sure. Granted, it doesn't actually do anything if you don't have any dragons. Let's see. But if you have some, yeah. If you have it in your hand already, it just helps you play them faster. If you have them in the deck, then you can try to crack it and hopefully get a dragon. Uh, yeah. 3.5 out of 5. If you have dragons, if you have no dragons, 0 to 5, it's useless. But if you have only one dragon, then I would put it down to like a 1 out of 5. Basically, it gets one point for every dragon in your deck. <laughs> so if you have, you know, three or four, this card's fantastic. And in standard, I am going to say... Damn, this is actually really nice, that second ability there. And you can do it at instant speed just because, like, you know, you want to refill your hand and then go so your opponent can't pulse seize you. Oh, wow. Or devour intellect, I guess it is. Um, geez, 4.5 out of 5. And it's not even legendary. God damn, this card's nice. Plundering Barbarian. For 3 mana, you get a 2-2, two, two, and when it enters the battlefield, either destroy target artifact or make a treasure. Okay, I mean, limited out of 5, for sure. I wouldn't necessarily bother playing this in Constructed. I think if you really want to destroy artifacts, there's still Empress Shieldbreaker in the format, and we don't really run that, even in Mono Red. Maybe you do, but that would be a better option than this. In, in Limited, there are quite a few artifacts that your opponent could play. Not just this thing, which should terrify you the moment you see it hit the board. But there are the Vecna cards. There's the Book of 
there's like the Vecna book, there's also the, the white book. There's plenty of equipment. So that first ability to destroy an artifact will probably be live in most games. And if not, making a treasure token is pretty damn good value. I'm actually going to up value this to a 3 out of 5 in limited because it has many targets and could be very impactful. Prince Bryce. There's no N in this entire title. <laughs> in the entire name of this card, there is no N. Cool. Price of Loyalty. It's a 3 mana sorcery. When you, you gain control of target creature on a turn, untap it, it gains haste. So active treason right there for the same cost as well. Uh, let's see, if mana from a treasure is spent to cast it, it gets buffed until on a turn. So, that's decent. Honestly, these things usually um, do pretty well in limited formats. So, for that, I would say, yeah, 3 out of 5. If you have treasures, 3.5, you can usually play this and probably turn the tide of a battle. No problem, there. Nope, like, no questions asked. This is a very, very strong effect. In standard, no, we still have Claim the Firstborn, which, although it's narrower, it's so much cheaper that it's just worth playing um even though the decks that run that as like recto sacrifice have largely fallen to the wayside so let's see you can still run it in red though as like just like a sideboard you know if you're playing against another um aggro deck just to take their stuff uh so yeah but this isn't going to see any play so in standard zero to five and limited 3.5 three out of five yeah that wasn't 3.5 or three that was specifically 3.53 Clarification. Red Dragon is a 6 mana 4-4 four, four with flying. When it enters the battlefield, it does 4 damage to each opponent. So I had an interesting situation when I was playing in my uh, in my limited thing. I forget if it was the draft deck or the uh, the sealed deck. Where my opponent played this and threw a bunch of equipment on it. It was a huge pain in the ass. And I happened to have a spell that could bounce it to the hand. But guess what? If I did that... I wouldn't I wasn't gonna die I had like five or six life but damn if it wasn't gonna hurt a lot so I was like well I can't bounce it now and I can't really really deal with it so yeah guess I'm gonna jump block till I die and eventually I died um yeah it was a sad story so unlimited this card's pretty damn legit it basically comes out and punches your opponent right away like it has four power it deals four damage would you play a six minute four four flying vigilance haste yeah you would even if it was just for the turn, yeah, I think you still would. And it's a dragon, so it works with dragon synergies. Absolutely, um, like, 4 out of 5 in limited. Standard, it's a 0. It's not like a flame tongue Kavu or something. But, you know, it's, it's okay. Maybe like a 1 just because it's a dragon. There you go. Okay, I'll, I'll give you the 1. I'll give you the 1 because this guy is looking quite toasty. Rust Monster is a 3-mana 2-1 beast with first strike, and you can sack an artifact to give it plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. So... Since there's no mana going into that ability, since there's no limitation of only doing this once per turn, yes, if this thing gets through uh, unblocked, then it can potentially just ramp up to all the damage you need. And you can, of course, do that after you see your opponent's blockers declared. In limited, this could be insane if you get, like, all the equipment, <laughs> because there's quite a few that can linger around, I swear to God. I ran into a thing where I was... My opponent played... The, the the blink dog the, I don't know it's like blink hound or just blink dog whatever it is um that's double strike right and they proceeded to have like four or five equipment on the board it's like oh my god you did it it was literally the only creature they had in their hand in the opener I swear and they're like oh they got this so they win nicely done but you can imagine attacking with this thing um not even having to equip the things and then whatever your opponent blocks with this thing doesn't get any more toughness so it's unfortunate but it's first strike so it kind of makes up for it that way Okay, all that out of the way. In standard, I'll give this a... Hmm. Costs three, so for that I'll give it a two out of five in standard. Might see some play, because the effect is just so cheap. Um, and in limited, and you can actually sacrifice... doesn't say non-token artifact either, you can sacrifice treasures. And food, for, <laughs> for that matter. And in limited, this is likely going to be a three out of five. Swarming Goblins is a 5 mana 4-3. Uh, let's see, ETB, roll a d20. Uh, let's see, if you get a 1 through 9, you make an... Make a creature token. <laughs> 10 through 19, you make 2, and 20, you make 3 Goblins. Okay, so it's, it's nice. The, the Swarm is here, and depending on how you roll, the Swarm may grow or grow even more. Uh, let's see, so for 5 mana, what do you really want there? You don't want a 5 mana 4-3, that's pretty nasty. But you at least get a 5 minute 4 3 and a 1 1. Hmm. Okay. Standard, this is too slow. It's not playable at all. In limited, 
It's okay, but it's still quite slow for 5 mana. You don't really want that. Even if you get your 20 and you have 3 tokens, you have 3 one ones now, which... Unless you're an extremely aggressive deck, then your opponent can largely ignore them or just pick them off like here and there while still attempting to deal with this guy. So for that reason, 2.5 out of 5, not bad. Pretty decent card. I wouldn't hate running this, but it's not going to run away with the game. In my opinion, Tiger Tribe Hunter is a 5 mana 4-4 four, four trample. Pack Tactics ability, uh, when you enable it, then this deals damage equal to the... S let's see. Hold on. When you do that, you can sacrifice another creature, and this deals damage equal to the sacrifice creature's power to target creature. Alright, so you attack with a bunch of strong things, right? And I guess this has trample, so that's nice. Um, hmm. And since this is dealing the damage, anything like, say you're attacking with two of these, just to make life easier, right? And with the pack tactics trigger, for one of them at least, you sack a Tiber tri Tribe Hunter to shoot your opponent's Swarming Goblins. There you go. Because Tiger Tribe Hunter, which has Trample, is dealing the 4 damage to a 3 toughness creature, the extra 1 point of damage, I believe, should go through to the face. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, and that's a decent effect, but I don't really like that too much at all, since it can't even go, like, outside of that, it can't go face at all. Um, hmm, let's see, it doesn't have to be an attacking creature, so... You can play this the next turn, play a huge thing, and swing and try to kill your opponent's thing. It's super awkward. It's a really awkward card. 2.5 out of 5, limited 0 out of 5 standard. There. Unexpected Windfall. Hey, look at that. For 4 mana, at instant speed, uh, additional cost to cast this spell to discard a card. So for 4 mana and a card, you draw 2 cards and make 2 treasure tokens. So, similar to like a Prismara Command, uh, what's the other one called? I forget what it's called. Not Tormenting Voice, that's like the lesser version. <laughs> but there's another one, Thrilling Discovery maybe? I think that's what it is, yeah. Instant Speed, sort of the same thing, but there's no treasures attached to it. Uh, this is pretty decent. It's expensive as hell. And for that reason, I don't think it's going to see any play in Standard. But in Limited, it's really not too bad. And the only thing that actually makes this thing playable is the Instant Speed um, timing of it. Because if it was Sorcery Speed, I would say zero. Instant Speed, I'm going to bump it up to a... To a two! Yeah, two, because discarding two cards... Oh no, you discard a card. Draw two. Yeah, this is actually more like a three. Sorry, I thought you had to discard two cards to draw two cards. No, no, no. Only one card? Yeah. Three out of five. Good value. Good value. Alright, Valor Singer is a... F I was gonna say five. Three mana, two, three. Beginning of combat on your turn, target creature control gets plus one, plus zero. You don't have to attack with this, but... It's not doing much anyway. Um, freaking 1.5 out of 5 and limited. It's not that good. It's, not, it's really not that good. Maybe 2.5. I don't know. Maybe not 2.5. Maybe just 2. Standard is useless. And Wish. Is that the last one? Nope. There's also Zorn. And oh, there's a few things. Holy crap. I gotta stop doing that. Alright. 3 mana for a Wish. You may play a card you own from outside the game this turn. So definitely okay and limited because you can. Let's just worth. Let's just note this that it says you can play a card. Which not only means that you can actually play lands from your sideboard outside the game. This is the sideboard, by the way, and unlimited is just the rest of the cards that were part of your collection for that event. But it also just says you can play it from outside the game. At no point does the card enter your hand, therefore your opponent can't thought seize it or something. There's a lot of... Um, there are quite a few cards that will add the card to your hand first and then you have to play it. This just plays it from out there, from from the sideboard, so that's kind of fun. Let's see there, so for that in standard, uh, this is kind of legit, and you're going to see a lot of people just putting lands in the sideboard, because guess what, for 3 mana you can avoid getting mana screwed. If you draw this, would you rather draw land instead? No, this is good, because you can also just put a little toolbox on the side. There's no restriction on what card that you can play, so yeah, absolute toolbox card, fantastic. In standard, I don't even know if it's like more best of one or best of three. It's probably going to be played in both. And I'm just going to go ahead and say five out of five. This card is absolutely going to see play. There's no doubt in my mind. In limited, I feel like you should also play this card. Yeah. It would be a weird thing. Like, do I want to put my huge powerhouse creature in my deck? Do I want to put it in the sideboard? And maybe do I want two of these in here? Do I want to split it one and one? That's an interesting deck building question. But I think this always goes in your deck. 
if you're running red, of course. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, five out of five both ways. I think this card is extremely powerful. And Zorn! Oh my goodness, Zorn. Look at you, Zorn. All right. So, for three mana, you get a 3-2 Zorn. If you would create one or more treasure tokens, instead create those tokens plus an additional treasure token. So you get one extra treasure. There you go. Um, it's not bad at all, just because there are quite a few treasure generators, and suddenly just making extra mana lets you play so many more cards each turn. You can play more things and make more treasure that let you play more things. It kind of fuels itself, and the body isn't even all that bad. So like three out of five in limited. I think even if you only have a few enablers, this thing's fine. I think it's worth the risk. In standard, I. I was, obviously there's going to be some sort of combo where you have enough of these and it's like, okay, I play this, I generate, you know, five treasures now, and I can use that to play this, and then I generate more treasure, and it just keeps, like, scaling off of itself. Uh, or at least the... You manage to go infinite and win, so there'll be something with that. Um, but otherwise it's going to be rather slow. So... Uh, th Three mana, three two. Can we play it? Now, bone crutches around. Two out of five. Okay, cool. Whew. Glad I came to that realization. You come to the Knoll camp. Two mana, instant speed. Either you intimidate them, up to two target creatures, can't block this turn, or you fend them off with a pokey stick. Target creature gets plus three, plus one. In standard, this is not a good effect at all, so that's a big old zero. In limited, this is okay. You can usually use this to get some damage through, some things want to deal combat damage to trigger effects, like draw cards, or venture into the dungeon, or what have you. So, pretty legit there, and you can even use it offensive, defensively, you know, as you're blocking, you don't have to go face, you can actually trade with the creature. So, yeah, limited, this is going to be a 3 out of 5, pretty good, standard, nothing. You find some prisoners. Oh, there's more? Oh, oh my goodness, why so many? This thing killed me one time because I was about to deck out, and then my opponent just said, you deck out now. I'm like, oh damn. Anyway, two mana, instant speed, destroy an artifact, or exile the top three cards of target opponent's library. Choose one of them until end of turn. Your until end of your next turn, you may play that card. You may pay mana as over any color to cast it. It's a very interesting effect. I think you could sideboard this card in a standard deck because maybe your opponent's playing like you know a particular artifact or something. If they're playing all the Skyclaves or they're playing Embercleave whether they're playing the Great Henge, and even if they don't get it, at least there's a fallback, okay, I'll just interrogate you, and maybe play that and steal the card, as possible. In Limited, I think this card's actually quite good for the very, uh, for a very similar reason. So, and also there's, quite, there's plenty of artifacts. So Limited, like 3.5 out of 5, super actually legit card. And it says play, so you can even play a land if, they, if you only have lands. A little unfortunate, but you can do it. In Standard, uh, this is going to be like a... Like a 3 out of 5, maybe even my higher, like 3.5 in the in the sideboard slot. Legit card. You see a pair of goblins, and you go, ooh, goblins. <laughs> you see a couple of prunes. You question your health. You see a doctor. So, for 3 mana, instant speed, creatures you control get plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. Or you can make 2 goblins. Or you can make 2 goblins. Three mana make two goblins, instant speed is terrible. That's just not good rate whatsoever. Let's see, creatures you control. So you oftentimes want, and, and standard is useless. In limited, oftentimes you do want to play that first ability to get some value out of it. And if you are, I mean, at least if you have multiples, you can make goblins and then buff them. Eh. But really not so good. Like 1.5. And if it was a sorcery speed thing, I think it'd actually just be zero. But I'll give it a 1.5 because at least maybe you can sneak something out, block with one of the goblins, and then have another one just being like, her pokey stick. Okay. And Zalto, Fire, Giant, and Duke. If there's another card after this, I'll be amazed because, like, we're at Zalto right now. All right, so for five mana, you get a 7-3 Legendary Giant Barbarian with a big old hammer well, with Trample. Whenever this does dealt damage, venture into the dungeon. So whenever the thing takes damage. Worth noting, it only has 3 health. <laughs> so, um, whenever it takes damage, it's not going to do so well. There's probably some, like, are you really going to end up shocking your own creature with this? You can attack with it, and I don't think your opponent's going to be so terrified of you venturing into the dungeon, unless you're going down the Tomb of Annihilation, potentially, that, actually, this decent stuff, because this is 
very aggressive. Like, you want to trample get the damage through. And then, yeah. You can use the tomb as you go through to kind of drain your opponent. I kind of like that. So oftentimes it attacks once and only once. And if your opponent removes it through... They're probably not going to deal three damage to it. They're probably just going to kill it with, like, Heartless Act. But it's interesting. And limited this card is very, very nice. Just the extra burst of damage is pretty legit. And if not, it can actually just hold your opponent's biggest creature back quite often. And sort of negate it. In standard, uh, I don't think you really want to wait till turn 6 to swing and then maybe venture and deal some damage. I think Emberclee comes down faster and hits harder. So... 1.5 out of 5 standard, but in limited, this is like a 3. Yeah. And Zeriel, yes, because there is something else that starts with Z. Thank you. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is the last one for real now. 4 mana, 4 loyalty, Planeswalker. Plus 1, creatures you control, get plus 1 for 0, and gain haste in the last turn. Okay. 0. You make a 1-1 one, one red devil tibble thingy. Um, Creature token, when it dies, deals 1 damage to any target. And minus six, you get an emblem with at the end of the first combat phase on your turn. Untap target creature, just one, that you control. After this phase, there's another combat phase. So, with the with, wasn't there some other like wording where if that thing goes and then you attack, it triggers something else? Uh, there was something, hmm. I forget exactly what it was. There's some strange little rules thing where it, uh, Ignore me there. So let's see. The first ability is okay. Can it actually really protect itself all that well? Not so much. And can your opponent afford to just ignore this for a little while? Yeah, I believe so. Especially because there's only going to be one creature that actually gets to untap. Now granted, say your opponent has two things and you only really want to kill one of them. And they manage to get the emblem. So they attack, you kill the one. You may as well kill it before combat, you know, before damage is declared is assigned and then your opponent's gonna say I get another attack phase with this one then and it gets some more damage through and it's a pain in the ass I think this thing might be a bit of a sleeper in limited this is like really nice this is just a super solid card if you can keep it alive for a turn it usually makes up for it it's like worth it it's gonna be tough ticking it up but like it's super nice so limited I'll say four to five even though it isn't like super flashy I think that it does what it does pretty damn well and at a good rate in standard I wouldn't be surprised to see one of the one or two of these things in a deck that actually goes somewhere. Or even just a sideboard card, because you stick this on the board and you can start spitting out devil creatures maybe against something like some kind of control deck. Uh, so yeah, the one damage to anything is okay. You can try to play it against like more of a tempo mid-range. Yeah, yeah, legit card. Uh, three to five in standard, four to five limited. That's my like going out on a limb there, but I hope Zariel, you better pull this off, I swear to god, or if you don't I'm gonna see you in my office. And with that, we are through. So, thank you very much for tuning in. I've reviewed, let's see, this is the fourth color now I'm going in Wooburg order, which means that we have the green left, and then we have the multicolored and monocolored cards including lands, and after that I'm going to record my little intro to D&D, um, to the, the set, not the actual game. Um, video which i'm going to try to have some fun with so stay tuned for those coming out in maybe a day or so and without further ado good night or good morning depending on where you are in the world but as always good luck